So everyone, welcome to another Living Life Naturally podcast. And I'm so excited today to have with me, and, and I forgot to ask, Tolake? Tolakai. Tolakai. So we have Melissa Tolakai. Uh, with us today and she is somebody that's really going to be able to talk to us ladies as we are in midlife she helps women navigate menopause naturally without side effects of a hrt or other medications and she's a qualified naturopath nutritionist herbalist and board certified holistic practitioner. So over the last decade, Melissa has been helping women use natural methods to relieve symptoms, those who are frustrated after being told by their physicians that their hot flashes, weight gain and other perimenopausal symptoms can only be helped with HRT or that they'll just have to ride it out. And she gives healthy, savvy women the tools and knowledge they need to lose stubborn weight, escape debilitating hot flashes, and rescue the health of their intimate areas so they can enjoy life with confidence again using a unique approach that she spent the last 10 years refining. So Melissa's mission is to stop other women from being medicated unnecessarily and to help them bring their bodies back into hormone, into harmony naturally. So I'm so thrilled to have you with us today, Melissa. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Lynn. It's a joy to be here. So tell our listeners where you're joining us from. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm out off grid near the Grand Canyon in Arizona. So right now, uh, the weather's pretty wild out here. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, but I'm here. Awesome. Um, tell tell our listeners where you're originally from. I, I was born in Australia. Um, lived there most of my life. I've I've actually lived in five countries, but Australia's my heart home, and that's where I trained. And I relocated to the US about four years ago. Awesome. So we're so happy to have you here because I I'm hoping we're going to get some really good ideas for our women out there who are and, and let me just explain to our women because when we talk about perimenopause some are not so sure what that is and that's when you're first going into that menopausal phase where you're getting all of those wonderful symptoms so menopause itself is actually a year after you've had your last period so for most of us we spend most of our time in that perimenopausal state so i want to ask you what got you into this line of work uh interesting story actually i became a naturopath um i should have become one because of my my own health issues and and they were pretty severe i actually um nearly died from the side effects of medications mm -hmm. uh that were just not properly prescribed to me um but it wasn't until many years later i actually had a little welsh pony for my daughter and he developed what we later worked out was diabetes oh yeah uh, so he led me down this fascinating path um, because conventional medicine nearly kill, killed him also he was literally on death's door i got a holistic vet and i was studying nutrition at the time and i just went i need more i need more it opened up this whole amazing world to me of natural medicine and i was inspired absolutely inspired i turned my health around he lived for another three years, but we couldn't undo the damage that had been done. And then when I went into practice, it, uh, I always say it was a feeling of coming home, um, that I was doing what I was born to do. And one day, one of my regular clients came in and said, Melissa, my, uh, my doctor's just told me there's nothing I can do for my um, menopausal symptoms other than take HRT or, as you said, write it out. And she was really upset and she said, is that true? And I said, absolutely not. You have so many options. And I was so incensed 
about the ignorance around this topic and that women are being shut down and told they have no choice other than HRT or nothing because it's absolutely not true and there is so much we can do to help ourselves through this it's a natural process and we can navigate it naturally mm. if we choose mm. so I know for a lot of people for a lot of women out there they have this question they get to a certain age mm. and they just don't know if this is perimenopause and let's face it you can go to the doctor they're not going to jump up and down and say, sure, I'll give you a, a blood test. And even then the blood test isn't that great because it depends what time of month. So what That's age right. does perimenopause start on average and how long does it last? That That's a fantastic question. Um, it varies dramatically. And I'm finding most women uh, around that 40 mark, things are going to start shifting. Uh, but if, if your mother's around ask her when things change for her because it's genetically pre-programmed when we're going to experience this through a through a female mm. line uh, so ask your mother that'll give you great clues it can go anything from two years to 12 years before we hit that final point of, of menopause uh, and so many women go through years of this without even knowing they're in it so um, that needs to change so they can be yes. far more proactive. Yes. There's been so little information until probably the last couple of years. I mean, people just didn't talk about the yeah. big M word. It was like, oh, I, no, I know my, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this. So we often hear, okay, so now we do here in the States. Mm -hmm. So here you are in perimenopause and... They're offering you HRT, but you don't want to do it. But they still offer you a bioidentical hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. And that's not always either the pathway to go because not all bioidentical hormones are the same. So what about the natural bioidentical hormones? I, The fact that they even call it natural is something I have a bugbear with because it is so heavily processed um and synthesize that you can't call it natural yet they're marketing it as natural because they know that draws women mm. it really is deceptive um yes it, it originated from plants but no it does not resemble plants any longer and the giveaway for that is it requires a prescription that should uh -huh. be the big right. red light going off that this is not natural uh, so the bioidentical, um, they have the advantage, yes, of being much closer to our natural hormones, but it is still hormone replacement and it still carries dangers. Um, and they haven't been studied uh, in combination with each other, so we still don't know the risks. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a bit of Russian roulette going on there mm. until more mm. is known. So what kind of natural methods for menopause symptoms do you use with your women that work? I, I use a, a wide spectrum of them, but the absolute foundation of everything is diet. Yes. Um, because if you don't change your diet, everything else builds on top of that. And if you don't build the base, then then you just don't get the deep results. So number one, get rid of the sugar because that inflammatory substance mm. sends our hormones crazy it's like setting yourself on fire and the second thing is get the alcohol out that exacerbates so many symptoms from the hot flushes to the sleeplessness it messes with your hormones it messes with your liver your bones our moods it's it really is a toxic substance and the liver will put it will prioritize detoxifying uh, and getting rid of alcohol above every other process it does. That is how dangerous it sees alcohol as. Mm. So I'm not against women enjoying a glass of wine here and there, but on a regular basis, no, because you're going to suffer dramatically with it. 
So those two things uh, are my baseline for all my women and that alone can have a huge impact on your symptoms. From there, we we work out what's necessary. Uh, nutrition, nutritional supplements will help balance the moods uh, which are coming about from hormone changes. We can use herbs uh, that are also, they're hormone-like, they hit on the hormone receptors, but they are not hormones themselves, so they're safe. We just have to use them with discretion and individualize them to the to each woman that comes in and what kind of natural supplements are out there that help women and i realize without being with somebody to direct you in the right way they they yeah. should should be very cautious of what they're using absolutely um i think one of the foundational ones i would use is magnesium yes to too many of us are magnesium deficient through poor diet, stress, which is like turning on a tap and draining our magnesium, trying to deal with it. Uh, so that alone can have a dramatic impact on um, hormonal symptoms and, and just help reestablish some harmony. Um, so, yeah, magnesium is an absolute starting place for me. Yeah, I've taken that for years, mostly because um, I have had migraines from mm -hmm. the time I had my babies. Yeah. And I magnesium is definitely one of my go tos. And, you know, I, if you take some in the morning and some at night, it can help you sleep as well, which is going to help you in that perimenopausal stage yes. of not being able to sleep. Yeah, it, it's beautiful for sleep. Um, you know, how many clients I've had said, wow, what a difference just with magnesium for their sleep, yeah. let alone their moods, because it brings down the anxiety. Uh, it brings down glutamate, which makes us anxious, um, helps promote GABA, which makes us calm. Uh, and definitely for the migraines, I mean, I've, I suffered them myself from my teens. That was the start of my... Um, uh, my nightmare with medications mm -hmm. uh, and oh my gosh if only someone had told me about magnesium yeah it's very interesting to me because I still see a neurologist on a pretty regular basis and she pushes magnesium which I think is wonderful when you've got a doctor that will use some of the natural methods yeah. um, to help people so so let me ask you this while we're talking about um different things that happen like hot flashes and moods going crazy what else besides magnesium and changing the diet do you recommend to people it it's a tricky one to answer because it's going to vary from each woman i mean each person is an individual and will react differently and so i know that i get this one a lot so i know that you do too so why am I gaining all this weight with perimenopause? Oh, the complex web. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are a multitude of interconnected reasons. Um, and every woman that walks through my door for my hormone program gets two tests, a cortisol test and uh, a thyroid test because this is the time where we're at greater risk of thyroid problems and they mimic perimenopause and they can be going on at the same time so we need to check that the thyroid's functioning properly because if it's underactive you are going to gain weight as our estrogen drops our cortisol rises cortisol being one of our stress hormones and it makes us gain weight it loves to make us gain weight yes and you know, any woman going through this knows it's a stressful time and the more stressed we are, the higher our cortisol goes and the harder it is to drop the weight and they could be dieting and hardly eating anything. They could be exercising like mad and it's all pushing the cortisol higher. So it seems counterintuitive, but sometimes we need to exercise less or do more yin forms of exercise like yoga walking just something gentle that brings the hormones down uh 
and just be remarkable on its own. Uh, mindfulness, anything that slows down the mind and brings that stress level down. But they are the two things you just have to have checked. Mm. Mm. And when you send people for a, a thyroid mm -hmm. check, what kind of thyroid test do you send them for? I'm getting a full comprehensive panel, not something that a physician would typically right. recommend. So they're generally sending them off. They probably get T4 and TSH, thyroid stimulating yes. hormone, and that alone is useless. I want to see T3, which is the active form of thyroid. I want to see if there's reverse T3 there, which is when we make it back the front. And it's like a lock, uh, sorry, a key fitting into a lock, but it won't turn it. It won't open it to turn on the cell and turn on our energy. Um, and I also want to check for thyroid antibodies. Mm. Really, really important to know as well. So I'm getting a full comprehensive thyroid panel done. There's that's just not one to skimp on, and it's very right. Cool. right. So the other thing that I get is, well, you know, my weight's redistributing. Redistrib mm -hmm. It's all here in my belly now. I've never had that problem before. What can I do about it? Uh, when it goes to the belly, we're looking at insulin resistance, uh, and that is very typical with perimenopause. This is this is our danger zone for a, a lot of um, conditions to develop, uh, and insulin resistance, which can lead to diabetes, is mm -hmm. one of them. And that's mainly due to the drop in estrogen, which protects us against that. Um, so if it's adding on to the belly in particular and you're finding you're getting more into that apple shape, then you need to look very um, carefully about managing your blood glucose. And uh, actually the magnesium we were talking about helps with that. Um, being very careful with diet, avoiding those processed foods, which are going to trigger those blood sugar spikes. A lot of it is very simple things we can do that don't cost much at all. Mm. It's knowing what's going on and having it identified so that women can take the right action for themselves and take their health back in their own hands. And do, do you find you use a specific lab? I'm just interested in, in telling my women that because I know that they're going to have to pay for some of these tests at out of pocket. Yeah. So... Can they just ask their doctor to refer them to a lab? You know, I know as a health coach, I've got some ins with how I can get lab testing done, and I'm sure that you do too. Yeah, yeah I, I refer my uh, clients directly. Um, I, I set up their lab tests, but I also have um, I have an online portal that people can go to and order their own testing. Um that I have set up, which most of us qualified protect practitioners can do. It's very hard to get your doctor to do these things. Um, they'll just typically do the T4, TSH, and that's it. And right. that's, that's all you need to know. And I'm sorry, but that's rubbish. Right, <laughs> I agree. You need yeah. information. Yeah. Uh, the cortisol test, um, I recommend the diurnal, which takes the, a 24-hour pattern. That's really important to see the pattern, not just a one-time uh, uh, picture during the day. You don't want a snapshot. You want the full day's curve to see where things are. Um, that you can do patient order for. There are a number of um, online um, uh, labs that will make that available, um, patient direct. Uh, so just make sure it's diurnal so that you're getting your full day's um, pattern. Yeah. I, I have done that one myself. And uh, I actually was seeing a kidney specialist for a while because my hormones were off and my potassium was way up. Oh. <clears throat> and I had to do that. And just very interesting, very embarrassing for me going in there with this whole big container full but yes, very useful for for getting to some of those root issues because our basic blood tests just don't do it for us. No, they don't. And those 
the bloods will change from moment to moment as as the body adapts to everything around it. So I find them highly inaccurate. And, you know, sometimes the physicians will order those blood tests of the hormones and my clients will come in and say, they're useless. Yeah. They really are useless. The, the Dutch test is really helpful, but it's not the be all and end all. Um, and I'm careful with it because it's expensive. It, and yes. So many clients yeah. can't afford it. Uh, but I find the, the, the information I get from the cortisol test combined with the thyroid panel gives me such a big picture of what's going on that we can make remarkable inroads with those two alone. Mm. Because if we know what the cortisol is doing, we know if the adrenals are under stress, we know if they're going into that fatigue of underactivity and need to be supported, or we need, we can also know if they need to be calmed down because they're just in that complete stress, right. fright and flight. Yeah. So could you give our, our listeners a couple of tips to get them started if they're hitting that sweet spot yeah. in their lives? Yeah, I, th I think the two big things that I mentioned earlier, um, getting rid of sugar and cutting right back on that alcohol will make remarkable difference. And they're going to reduce your risk factors in this really important time because your risk factors for cardiovascular disease go up. Women are going to find their blood pressure probably goes up. Uh, the cholesterol goes up and then the doctors are handing out statins like lollies. Mm. And what people need to know is it's a natural thing for cholesterol to go up during perimenopause because cholesterol is the mother hormone, uh, the mother molecule of your hormones. It's what we use to make progesterone and estrogen and testosterone. And so as those things start to back off, as our ovaries um, can't make as much, the liver says, well, I must need more cholesterol so I can make some more of those. So it naturally increases. So the answer is not to throw statins at people with all their side effects, but to support the liver and to support the hormones. Um, so we can support cholesterol in a very healthy way with uh, globe artichoke, well studied, very safe, brings down the LDL without affecting the healthy HDL, supports and protects the liver at the same time, supports digestion while you're at it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonder food. Uh, so, I, so is that a specific supplement that you buy? I, uh, you can buy it as capsules or a herbal extract, and um, it's you. You can find the research papers online. Uh, Globe artichoke and um, very well supported for bringing down cholesterol. You do need to give it a few months, probably three months, to to see it reflected in the blood tests. But you can do that with all without all the side effects of something like statins, which increase your risk for diabetes, which women are often and men misdiagnosed with dementia from taking mm. statins. Mm. It's, and that causes muscle pain as well. Mm. So really a vicious cycle. It is. So if if you have the knowledge or someone to support you through it. Um, you can do it just so much more gracefully and safely. Yeah. So where can people find you? Mm -hmm. uh, two places. Uh, they can find me at Hot Flash No More, which is the um, early interest weight page for my uh, natural menopause course, or they can find me at melissa-tolakai.com, and that's my clinic website. Right, I'll have all of those in the show notes. Thank you so much for all of this interesting information. I think what I, I want to get across to women in perimenopause going into menopause is that there's definitely hope and there's help out there for them. There, there definitely is, and thank you for helping me get the word out about how important yes. it is. I yes. appreciate it. Thank you so much, Melissa.
Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Lynn. You have been listening to the Living Life Naturally podcast, where we're on a mission to inform, inspire, and encourage women to live their best life confidently, joyfully, and freely from what's been holding them back. For show notes and free resources, visit holistic-healthandwellness.com. And I'd be delighted if you'd follow us on socials to connect further. If you enjoyed this show, why not share it with your friends? If you found good value, chances are they will too. And of course, a five-star review on iTunes is always greatly appreciated, as much as I appreciate you listening. So until next time, live life naturally and joyfully.